Hi everyone. Thank you for joining this month's Stampin' Class by Mail. I'm Gina Wieselman of MySweetPaper.com and I can't wait to show you how to stamp and assemble your cards using the Hang and Ornament Bundle by Stampin' Up. If you ordered a Class by Mail kit, go ahead and pull out those parts and pieces now. If you didn't order a kit, visit my website linked in the video description to access the full supply list with measurements. You'll also need the stamp set, ink pads, and other supply items shown here. If you need any supplies, use this month's host code or designate me as your demonstrator to qualify for all of my promotions, including receiving three completed cards from my collection with every order of $50 or more. Click subscribe on this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos and reach out anytime you have questions or would like to chat more about Stampin' Up. Let's get started. Our first card design is the hanging ornament card. If you ordered a class by mail kit, go ahead and pull out these parts and pieces right now. If you didn't order a kit, pause the video here, prep everything that you need, and come back when you're ready to stamp and assemble. We are going to start with our stamping for this card. So we'll be using our cherry cobbler ink pad. And then we have this little piece that will run across the ornament and it will say all is merry. So I'm just going to ink that up. And the beauty of photopolymer is I can see right where I'm stamping. Looks good. That is all of the stamping that I have planned for this card. Of course, if you wanna add any embellishments on the inside or to your envelope, feel free to do that now. All right, with our stamping complete, we will go ahead and start our assembly. So for this card, we are going to start assembling on this panel. So this is Stampin' Up's brand new basic beige color. It's a really fun color and it is featured in the designer series paper. So I pulled that color in for this card design and I embossed this panel using the Time Worn Type 3D embossing folder. So that's what gave it that texture here. But to start, we are just going to use our stamp and seal. And I'm going to start with this green banner. And this banner, uh, the designer series paper here, both of these colors, as well as the red of the ornament, they are from the Season of Elegance 12 by 12 designer series paper. So that's really fun. So I'll just line this one up with the top, make sure it's straight maybe about a quarter of an inch from the side. Then I'll come back with my basic beige banner. And I'm going to overlap that a little bit and you can play around with kind of the placement of that. But of course we wanna make sure there's enough room for that uh, gold twine for our ornament. So don't, don't move it too far over here. Okay, and then we'll add the gold panel. Okay, and it's pretty easy to line up at the top here, but you can always flip it over and check if you need to trim any with your paper snips. Next, let's go ahead and assemble our Christmas ornament. So I think I can probably just use stamp and seal for this piece, make sure it's not overlapping at all, but I tend to make a mess when I use liquid glue. So when I'm able to use stamp and seal, I do. Okay, that looks good. And then for the top of the ornament, I will pull out my mini glue dots and just pick up one of them and attach that. Okay, so now I can kind of see where that ornament is going to go. And I am going to pull out the gold twine and I'm going to attach it on the back of the ornament using a Stampin' Dimensional. So I'll just run that down the center and attach that. And then I'll just grab a couple more for popping up the full ornament. And then you can decide where about you want that to go. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just peel the release papers right away on that. And again, I'm just making sure that I like where that will go. I think that looks good. And then when I wrap this around to the back side, I have found that good old scotch tape is the easiest. So you could of course adhere it in any way, but I'm just gonna make sure that it's straight, wrap it around, and I trust this to stay nice and secure. Okay, now let's bring out our card base and we'll go ahead and fold this in half. And I'll grab my bone folder for a nice crisp fold here. And then to adhere this, I'll use my stamp and seal. And I'm gonna go over this part that I taped and be a little generous right there. Okay. And our last touch here is our bow. This cherry cobbler and gold satin ribbon is so pretty. And I actually decided to use a mini Stampin' Dimensional for adhering this because I wanted it to be nice and elevated at the same level of the ornament without um, covering up the, the top piece of the ornament. So you could use a mini glue dot and attach it just right on top of the ornament there if you wanted, but I decided to go with this route. And then you can go ahead and trim the ribbon tails if needed. Of course, the pre-tied bows is a major perk of doing the classes by mail because I I already tied and sent that to you. All right, and that was our finishing touch. So here is our first card design. Our second design is the ornament trio card. And here are the parts and pieces for this design. Once again, we will go ahead and start with our stamping. And again, I'm going to start with my cherry cobbler ink pad. And I'll just bring out a piece of scratch paper and then this cherry cobbler piece and we'll be stamping um, this foliage right on there. And so we're just kind of randomly positioning that. A lot of it, especially on this side, will be covered up by the ornaments, so you don't have to stamp it everywhere, but I sometimes just find it easier to do that and make sure I have full coverage. All right, that is it for Cherry Cobbler, so I'll go ahead and pull that out. And then I'm going to bring in all three of these ornaments, which were die cut using the hang and ornament dies. And we're going to be stamping our two ornament images on those three pieces. And we're going to be using our pretty peacock ink for all three of them. Now, before I open that, I just wanted to note, as you'll see in our third card design, this die cut is really cool. It doesn't quite cut the pieces out entirely. So, if there are any little nubs from the three parts where it punched out of the paper, go ahead and trim those. They're not super noticeable, but I think it's worth just trimming a little bit to get a nice smooth edge on that. Okay, now let's open up our ink pad and the just for you greeting i'm going to be putting on this one and it really doesn't matter you know which which one goes where i'll use this one on here okay and then while i have this one i'll go ahead and use the just for you stamp and get that centered as well And then I'll use this other design, the other image, for the other two ornaments. Once again, 
the benefit of these photopolymer stamps because without that it would be really hard to come even close and it looks like I did an okay job on all three of those. Okay, so that is all of our stamping. Unless, of course, you'd like to add something to the inside. All right, so let's get started on assembly. Once again, I'm going to start with this basic white panel that once again was embossed using our time-worn type 3D embossing folder. Um, but this time I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere the cherry cobbler panel right away. And I'm aiming for I don't know, maybe a half to three quarters of an inch from the bottom. So I'm just wanting to make sure that it's straight here. And then you will likely need to trim a little bit from the back. I often like to cut these pieces just a little bit long to make sure that um, there's no shortage. But I'll pull out my thick basic white card base and my bone folder and crease right along that score line to get a nice fold. And then let's go ahead and add this panel right away. Okay. Now a little bit of assembly for our ornaments. And I have all the little hardware pieces right here. And I'm just going to be using my mini glue dots for these. So I'm going to pick up and actually, I can probably just go ahead and attach all three of these pieces and then pull them up one at a time to add to the ornaments. And then I'm going to take each of the ornaments and add a glue dot right to the back. And I'll just do all three of those again. And then I found it easiest to just set the hangers down and kind of pick them up off the counter. So that was easier to me for some reason than trying to attach it and deal with those tiny little pieces. So, so that's how I did it. Of course, do whatever works for you. And then I'm going to do stamp and seal on these two, the pretty peacock and the old olive. And I'm going to put the old olive on first. And I'm just going to laying this out to get a sense of where everything is going to go. There will be quite a bit of overlap with this old olive one. And so I'm just gonna maybe position it like that. And then come over with this one. And then our last one, we are going to pop up with dimensionals. And so I'm going to use a little mini dimensional right where that hanger is attached. And I'll use maybe three of the full-size dimensionals for the rest of the ornament. So just peel up those release papers. And then you can attach that last one. And I like the way it covers up that center part of the old olive ornament um, so that it doesn't look like something is missing or forgotten. Okay, and our final finishing touch is some of these gold textured adhesive back dots. And so your kit came with two sizes. So I'm going to put the large one right in the middle and then the smaller ones on either side, aiming for equal spacing, but of course, no one will notice if it's not perfect. All right, and there is our second card design. And our final design is our ornament surprise card. So go ahead and pull out or prep these pieces now. Now, before we get started with stamping, I wanna just show you how this card works. So it's really cool. Like I said earlier, 
Um, this die doesn't punch the ornament out all the way. It's attached at just three little areas here. So with this card, the person can actually pull right on here and the ornament will pop out and they can hang it on their Christmas tree or wherever they would like. Now, the fun part is that there's actually a surprise hidden behind where this same image is stamped on the old olive cardstock because I decided, you know, when they punch this out and remove it, I want to make sure that the card still looks beautiful. So we don't just want a blank spot in the middle. So I'll show you how I did that. And like always, we will go ahead and start with our stamping. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out this piece, kind of the focal point, and all of our stamping will be in Mossy Meadow ink. So let's go ahead and start with the pine bow. And I will note, I washed this since we used it in red ink on the previous card, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this in each corner. This would be a great element to add to your envelope or the inside of your card if you want. And then next, I'm going to take this ornament image. Um, once again, already cleaned this, and we are just going to center this up right on that die cut. Looks good. Now here's the fun part. Like I said, I want to make sure that that shows through on this old olive piece. So I'm actually going to start assembling before I continue on with my stamping. So your kit came with three pieces of this designer series paper. Go ahead and set the longest one aside and take the two shorter ones and your stamp and seal. And we are going to attach those right away. And so I'm just going for equal borders here. And I will note if you are worried about stamping this image again and getting a good transfer, you could certainly just lay these pieces on your card um, and not adhere them. But I feel confident enough that I'm going to go ahead and secure them. And then in your kit, you have just a white printer paper piece of paper, um, which I actually ran through the die cutting machine at the same time as this piece. So these two will be kind of bundled together on top of each other. And so what I'm going to do is just punch this ornament out and this is going to be my guide. Now your kit does come with three, so if you mix them up and you're not sure, you can layer it back on top and just verify. But I'm just going to use this as a guide and set it right where I'm going to be adhering this panel and then bring my stamp back, ink it up, and put it right in that negative portion. All right. Now we'll put these two pieces aside because we do have a tiny bit more stamping to do. We have these two little pieces and two tiny little stamps. And the first one is I guess this one is really the tiny one, the word pull. We wanna make sure people know that they can pull that ornament off. So go ahead and stamp that on the arrow. And then we'll also pull back the all is Mary stamp. Of course, if you wanted to use the just for you stamp, you could certainly do that. But I'm going to stamp this right in the center. And actually, I am now remembering I stamped that in here as well. So go ahead and do that quick too. And the final piece of stamping here, this is optional, but it's right on the white piece, just to add a little hanger to it. I remembered the hanger now, remembered that inner stamp. I think that is officially all of the stamping. So I'll put my ink pad away. All right, so we already have a jump start on assembly. What I'm going to do first is get this white panel ready. So I'm going to add the all is Mary panel 
that greeting. I'm going to add the pull tab. For this one, I think I will use some liquid glue. And then I'm just going to put that right up here. And then I'm gonna set that aside to dry for a little bit before I add the twine. And in the meantime, I'm going to put together the card. So go ahead and fold right along that score line. Use your bone folder for a crisp fold. And we can adhere this panel to the card front right away. Once again, just regular stamp and seal for this. And we are centering this up on all four sides. Okay. Next for the inside panel, this is where your longer piece of that designer series paper comes in. So you can go ahead and add some stamp and seal and adhere that. You can put it all the way toward the top or the bottom for that matter. You can leave a little white trim, whatever you think looks best. But as always, make sure to trim any excess if needed. And then let's go ahead and add this panel to the inside of the card right away. Okay. Now I found it easiest to add this twine before this was attached to the card. Now, of course, you're going to want to be careful so that you don't accidentally punch out the ornament, but I found it reasonably feasible to thread that through. And then if you need to grab, you know, your paper snips or take your pick tool or something to pull it through to the top, go ahead and do that. And I gave you plenty of this. Um, of course, you want to make sure that it fits in the envelope so you won't want it all the way off the top, um, but you can just go ahead and tie a knot, and then as you're tightening, play around with where you want it. And of course, you do want it long enough that someone could actually put this on their tree if they so desired, um, but then we will just use our Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to be pretty generous with these. And actually, I might use a combination of the full size and some of the minis, because I just don't want this to fall around that ornament. Okay, so go ahead and peel the release papers. And then this is where we trust that how we lined it up before is going to work reasonably well. And we add this to the card front. Last touch, of course, go ahead and trim up the ends of these strings. But here is our third and final card design. Follow the link in the video description to access my website post about this month's class by mail. It includes the supply list with measurements, as well as a link to a Pinterest board curated with more ideas for using this month's supplies. You can also find more information about next month's class by mail on my website. If you're not already on my email list, go to tinyurl.com slash mysweetpaperemail to sign up, and you'll receive monthly emails with new class information. I always love hearing from you, so leave a comment on this video and let me know what you thought of these designs. Until next month, happy stamping.